Having reviewed the components of biodiversity in the last lecture, we're ready to examine what it means to conserve biodiversity. We'll begin with a dictionary definition. If you go to the Oxford English Dictionary, you'll see that conservation is the preservation, protection, or restoration of the natural environment and wildlife. This implies three specific tasks. These three steps are summarized in this diagram. The first step is to define a baseline. If we're going to preserve or restore an ecological system to its natural state, then we need to understand what that natural state is. What exactly is it that we're trying to achieve? Next, we need to determine how the system has changed over time. We're talking here of identifying threats to biodiversity. Lastly, we need to identify ways of counteracting those threats and bringing the system back to its natural state or as close as possible to it. We're talking here of devising solutions to problems. Together, these three steps comprise the biocentric model of conservation. There's one core goal, and that is conserving biodiversity. Basically, the job is determine what's gone wrong and then fix it. Now, this model provides an accurate description of what biodiversity conservation is about, but it has an important limitation, and that is it's incomplete. The missing element is people. People want different things. They don't all share the same goals. And so, in practice, a large part of what conservation is about is grappling with trade-offs among competing land use objectives and trying to find an appropriate balance. A more complete model of conservation is shown here. We'll go through the various components one at a time. The biocentric model we discussed earlier is still here. I've labeled it science domain to reflect the fact that it's mostly conservation professionals that are active in this area. The activities are the same. They include studying the landscape to determine what the natural state is and how it's changed over time, and they include devising solutions to conservation problems. But we can see from these arrows that the flow of information has somewhat changed. Information about the state of the landscape still primarily flows into the science domain, but conservational professionals are generally not the ones making decisions about how we interact with the landscape. Instead, information about conservation problems and solutions that flows down to the public and to stakeholders and to decision makers. The next domain is the realm of the public and stakeholders. This is where values and priorities and concerns about biodiversity are determined, along with other societal objectives. Now, few people have direct first-hand information about the state of the landscape or the plight of individual species. They depend on conservation professionals to provide that information. But it's the public and stakeholders who determine what's important and they determine what needs action. And this information feeds back to scientists and it feeds over to decision makers as well. It's ultimately the public that both enables and constrains conservation. Lastly, we have the decision system. This generally resides within government, but it can occur within organizations as well, say a forestry company developing a management plan. Decision makers have several tasks. First, they need to distill broad values into discrete measurable working objectives. Next, they need to determine which management options are available. And lastly, they need to decide which course of action is best. And this generally means grappling with difficult trade-offs among competing land use objectives. In most cases, we can't get everything that we want. The entire enterprise of conservation is supported by an institutional framework that varies from country to country and even region to region. The institutional framework determines how the system is organized. It also defines lines of authority, especially around decision making, and it supplies the resources that are needed for conservation actions to take place. As you might expect, the natural home for conservation biologists is the science domain. However, that's not an exclusive role. You may wind up working for an environmental group serving as a stakeholder, or you may end up as a wildlife biologist working for the government. Regardless of where you end up, to be effective, and that's an important goal of this course, to be effective, you need to understand how each of the domains operates, and you need to understand your role within that domain. In upcoming lectures, we'll explore the inner workings of each of these domains in some detail. In so doing, we'll build a bridge from conservation science to conservation practice.